Hello everyone. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use web APIs to populate drop-down menus in Google Sheets. We'll be utilizing a Countries and Cities API to fetch data related to countries, states, and cities. You can see the site for the API documentation on the right. I have used get all countries and their states methods. This is the URL that I will use to fetch countries and states date. You can use states and cities data if you like to. The process will remain nearly the same. You can explore this documentation site later. I will post the link in the description below. To begin, make sure you've made a copy of the spreadsheet file I've linked in the description below. To do that, follow these steps. Open the file link. Go to the file menu. Select Make a Copy. It might take a moment to load, but once it's done, open the script editor by going to Extensions and clicking on App Script. Inside the script editor, you'll find a function I've defined called Fetch Countries and States to retrieve data from the API. Here's a brief overview of the code. I'm using a specific URL that I mentioned earlier to fetch the countries and states data. After making the API request using URL Fetch app, I receive a response. This is the structure of the response that I get back. You can see this cannot be written to our spreadsheet without transformation. Therefore, I transform this response into a two-dimensional array, which makes it easier to populate our spreadsheet. This code block is responsible for the data transformation. It first iterates through all the country's data, then grab the country name and state's array. Then it again loops through each state data, grab its state name, then pushes the state name and country name in the main array here. And finally, we return the array. Now let's move to the spreadsheet itself. We need to first fetch all the countries and states data. In the data tab, I'll utilize fetch countries and states function defined in the script editor. This function fetches all the states along with their respective countries and populates the sheet. Next, we need to create data validation dropdowns for both countries and states. Here's how you can do it. We will first make dropdown list for countries. In sheet one, select cell A1 to A10. You can modify your selection depending on the number of rows you want this dropdown to extend to. Then go to the data menu, choose data validation. Select dropdown from a range. In the dropdown source, I will select the entire column A in data tab. Then click on done. Once you've done this, you'll see the dropdown list with all the countries. Now for the state dropdown list, we want them to be dependent on the country selection. So if you choose a country, you should only see the states belonging to that country. To achieve this, we need to somehow filter the state's data in the data tab based on the selected country in the sheet one. Here's how you can set it up. Go to the data tab. Select cell C1. Apply the formula. Filter column B to B with the condition A to A equals to sheet 1 A1. This way, the selected country in cell A1 will filter the state's data accordingly. To ensure it appears horizontally, apply the transpose function just before filter function. I will drag this formula down to 10 rows because I want to extend the drop-down list up to 10 rows in sheet 1. This way, when we select country in cell A1 in sheet 1, we will get the corresponding filtered states list in cell C1 in data tab. When we select country in cell A2 in sheet 1, we will get the filtered states list in cell C2 and so on. Now select range B1 to B10 in sheet 1. Then go to the data menu. Choose data validation. Select drop down from a range. In the drop down source, I will select C1 to 1. I have kept this open-ended because the number of filtered states could be anything. Open-ended will allow to extend the source up to the last column number in the sheet. Now the most important thing is that you need to make sure that the row number is without dollar sign. Why? Because that will make the drop-down source to be relative to the applied cell. Let me tell you what do I mean by that. See I have applied drop-down data validation to cells B1 to B10 and I have chosen its source to cell C1 to 1. So what the relative reference or removing dollar sign before row number will do here is that row number of the source range will remain at a fixed offset to that of the applied range. 
For example, in our case, the source range for B3 cell will become C3 to 3, the source range for B4 cell will become C4 to 4, and so on. This is how you make a series of dependent drop-down lists in Google Sheet or Excel. Moving on, let's test that. I have kept both tab open side by side for you to see what's going on in a better way. Let's first select a country. You can see when we select a country, the filtered list appears automatically in the respective place in the data tab. This filtered list then populates our state's drop-down list. And there you have it. Your Google Sheets now have drop-down menus populated with data from the web API, making your data entry tasks a breeze. Feel free to explore and adapt this technique for your own projects. You will find the link to this spreadsheet in the description below. If you have any query, then please ask them in the comments below. If you like the video, then please hit the like button. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel for more such videos. See you in the next one.